Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make a fitted kimono dress, as you can see on the thumbnail, and with a straight neckline. You can see how fitted this dress is. It does not have a neckline connection. It's just straight on the neckline. So... I'm going to teach you how to achieve this perfectly, okay? So you can see the neckline, that is the purpose of this tutorial. So if this is what you want to learn, please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. So to begin this tutorial, I'm using two yards of um, crepe fabric to sew this um, fitted kimono with size zip. So this kimono dress, you can see the two yards, I'm trying to fold them, you know, on the two yards part it came by 60 inches length so once you fold it you fold it again so i'm folding it the second time so we'll have our center front on this part so let me arrange it folded the first one you can see the the part that is on fold and i fold it again so this is how you're supposed to fold your fabric before we start so I'm actually using two yards because um, I'm working for a smaller size, okay? So the bust circumference is 32 and the waist circumference is um, 26 and the hip circumference is 36. So you can actually see it's a small size. So the whole of this part is going to be, is unfold already and is going to serve as the center front and the center back for this kimono dress. So now we want to start off by making the border line. Okay, so I'm making the border line of this dress right at this point. Okay, so I just make the border line or the starting line on the dress. All right, I believe you are seeing the chalk lines, okay? So I believe you are seeing it. So now once I'm done with that, this the neckline is actually a straight neckline. So you are going to see how this neckline is going to be, well, how we are going to achieve it in this class, okay? So just follow the video instructions. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to mark out the, I'm marking out the, vertical lines this is my shoulder line next line i'm going to make is going to be the chest line but i'll just leave the chest line and go over to my okay or let us just make the chest line so i'm working with bust 32 of course you know how to divide 32 by 6 plus 1.5 that would be my chest line so my chest line including the one inch drop drops at eight inches for this particular dress so from that eight inches i'll add half an inch for stitching that will serve as the chest line so we actually need the chest line because we are going to make the the kimono sleeve from the chest line so i mark on this part I don't want to extend it to the center from because this is a part of the sleeve. So I'll just mark my chest line. So after I'm done marking my chest line, the next I want to mark is my waist line. So the so the my waist line for this dress is 16. Her waist is 16, and I'll add half an inch on the waist line. So I'll just keep marking on this side where I'm going to work on so after i'm done the next i want to mark is going to be the hip height so i've already marked the 16 and a half so i'm going to take my for my waist i'm going to take the hip the hip is 26 i'll add half an inch for stitching and i'll mark then I'll now take the full length of this gown. So the full length of this gown, I'm making use of 58 inches. So I'll just take my tape to 58, and this is my 58. I'll add one inch for him. Okay. 
or we can even do um one inch for him and half an inch for stitching that is 59 and half okay all right so the ss fabric i have here i'll just go ahead and do what cut it out then we'll start off this tutorial immediately so i'll just cut out all right so this fabric actually came more than 60 so you can have some like that so now we'll start the imputing the horizontal measurement and so the next i want to do is to start imputing the horizontal lines and on the shoulder line i'm going to impute my shoulder divide by two so my shoulder from one shoulder to the other is 15 divide by two i will have seven and a half so this seven and a half i'm going to place it right here like I said, this neckline is actually straight. It does not have any um, curved, you know, natural neckline and all that. So this is how to go about it. So from here, I'll mark my shoulder line. So at this shoulder line, divide by two, I'm going to place my, my, I'm going to place the sleeve. Okay, so my sleeve, I'm using um, six and a half. For the sleeve length so from here this shoulder line i'll mark six and half so if you're on a bigger side please don't use two inches i'm using uh, two yards of fabric i'm using two yards because this is a small size so the bigger you go the bigger the yardage you work with for this particular dress so now i've marked and this is where i have my sleeve line and this sleeve is going to have a turn up also so at six inches uh, six and a half i've marked then this is the line of our chest line so i'll come over to the chest line that is where i'm going to place my bust circumference divide by four so on the chest line the bust circumference is 32 divide by four is eight inches so i'll come on this line i don't want to really mark it to the end but this is the line so on that line i'll place my bust circumference of eight inches so i'll mark the eight inches and i'll just go ahead and add ease of half an inch okay so this is a kimono dress it's not actually going to be that straight so you can see where i have my ease and i'll mark please take note of where we have the marking so i'll just extend my line to that mark then on this line where we have the sleeve i'll just go ahead and make my ruler straight and mark i'll mark then i'll come in from here to here by one inch okay i'll come in by one inch then at that one inch i'm going to connect my kimono sleeve to the shoulder line this way okay so i'm connecting my kimono sleeve directly to the chest line so whatever your chest line is just on that line coming by one inch after placing your ruler straight and connect so i'll go over to the waistline so it's a fitted kimono so you are going to walk and put little ease to it as if you are making a fitted dress so on this line that is where i have my waist my waist circumference is 26 this is 26 i'm working with then I'll divide that 26 by 2. I have 13. Divide by another 2. I have 6 and half. So on this line, I'll place my 6 and half. So this is the waist circumference. So I'm going to add to this waist. I'm going to add another half an inch. But if you want it to, to be a little freer, okay, like this one, I really want it to be a little freer. So I'll just add 1 inch. I don't want it that very tight, okay, fitted as it is on the thumbnail. So I added one inch to the waist because I need it a little free and I added half an inch on the bust. So I just go ahead and connect from that point to this point. So your ease is by preference. You can even make this dress with your actual uh, measurements. Like you can see right there on the thumbnail, you can see it's made with the actual measurement. 
So I've connected my bust to the waist. I believe you are seeing this line. So I just come over here and put or place that kimono, you know the kimono curve. So I will allow my curve to go from the from this line to the side line. Okay, so you can see that kimono curve running uh, down there. So the next thing I want to go now is to, to go over to the hip before I cut. So this is my hip circumference. You can see the hip line. So on the hip line, I'm working with hip 36. 36 divided by 2. 36 divided by 2. I will have 18 divided by 2 because we are dividing by 4. Everything is divided by 4. So I have 9 inches. So you can actually use your calculator to divide your hip by 4. So from the center line, I will mark 9 inches. And just like I said, I'm making it very, very free. Not very, very free any, anyway, just like a shift. I just want it to be a little loose on the body. So I'll add 1 inch. So if you want it fitted, then you connect to that, your actual size. So I place, let's go ahead and connect the hip line to the waist line. Can you see? I'm connecting the hip to the waist. So now for the down part of this dress, I'm going to the hem part of it i actually want the hem to be that very very free okay i don't want to make it a pencil because it's not going to have a slit so since we are going to have it very very free i'm going to place my hip measurement and i'll add three inches my hip measurement on the hem is nine this is nine inches and i'll add three inches to it so you can be able to walk with the dress okay so i added three inches on the hem so i'm going to connect from here now i'm going to connect it to my hip line so i just go ahead and connect from this line can you see how i'm connecting it so from the hip this way i'll connect it to the three inches on the hem so the the person wearer wearing the dress will be able to walk so i believe you understand this from this hip i added the ease i came to the hem measured hip divide by four plus three inches okay so i'm going to cut out this dress now then we'll proceed to the next stage for people so before we cut this dress note that at this point and on the shoulder line we are supposed to come down with shoulder slope and I know you will be wondering why I did not come down. So I just forgot. I'm adding, coming down by one inch for my shoulder slope. Can you see? So I'm going to connect that one inch shoulder slope. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to connect it. Like I said, this dress is just a very, very, uh, the neckline does not have any natural neckline. So I'm connecting my shoulder slope from here. Can you see? From that one inch to the, just this way, to the center front. Okay? You connect it to the center front. I believe you understand what I did from there to the center front. Then I'm going to replace this one inch down here because the kimono sleeves are not usually tight. So from here to here, you can see I had seven and a half. So if I add one more inch now to it, my sleeve will increase a little bit. So I place my tape, my pattern ruler following this chalk line. Okay. So that's just little alteration I was supposed to do. So I'll keep my ruler straight to touch this line. So once it touches the line, I'll come back with my... I'm going to come back and do this. You know the normal way we do it. I just put the curve. So make sure you slope down before you have your connections done. Okay? So this becomes my 
okay my kimono curve now so i'm going to cut this right away and i want you to follow how this is cut so from that shoulder i'm going to cut on the slope can you see so once you cut it to the slope remember that our sleeve is going to uh, we are going to close it exactly on the shoulder divide by two okay so the shoulder divide by two i'll make a notch if you don't want it that to be on the shoulder like that you can come in by half an inch before you make your notch so i'll just come in by half an inch from that shoulder this is my shoulder from here divide by two seven and a half i'll come in by half an inch and make a notch okay so this notch is where i'll stop my sleeve sewing of course you'll see it when we can you see so make sure you have that notch very important so now i'll come over from this uh, sleeve i'll go down can you see that then next i'll go in from here So, but before you cut this, make sure that you have all your measurements correct. Okay, you see, we have not added our sewing allowance. Please, this is very, very important. Our stitching allowance. I almost forgot. Okay, I almost forgot. So, we need to add our stitching allowance. So, to add your stitching allowance, it means I'm going to cut 0.5 inch this way. So instead of cutting directly here, okay, I will just be cutting, adding my 0.5. So let me just do that. So if you want to also cut um, with one inch, that's if you want to sew with one inch, but from this sleeve area, we usually use 0.5. So I'll just leave it this way and from here, I'll assume I've added because that's the mistake I made now. So, but please, you need to be very careful when working on fabric, okay? So, you need to add your allowances for stitching. So, from here, I'll start to add my, my 0.5, okay? So, I'm adding my half an inch. I'll be using half an inch to sew this dress anyway. I'll just use half an inch. So, if you want to use one inch you can also do that so i'm using half an inch so if you see what i'm doing i'm just adding my seam allowances of half an inch but i will advise you to add it up on your measurements so you don't make this mistake i just made now so i was thinking i was working on paper as usual so I'll keep cutting till I get to the end of this dress as you can see all right so this is what the dress looks like right now so it's actually a very simple dress and it's fitted as you can see so what I'm going to do, since I have my notches now, the next thing I'm going to do is to close up this, okay? So this dress, we don't have front, we don't have back. So I'll just go ahead and open up the dress. I have my notches. I'll place it right side to right side. Is a actually somehow fitted, so it's going to have a zipper. So I'll go to my machine now, and I'm going to stitch close from notch to notch i'll get to the end of this notch i'll come over here i'll also stitch from notch to notch so let me do that now right people so now i'm done stitching you can see the kimono part of the sleeve and this is where we placed our notch and i stitched from here to here and I place my notch, I stitch from here to the end of the sleeve. So here you can see the neckline. Okay, so that's how the neckline is going to be. So what I just want to do is to 
and make it a little because this part is pointy so i just go ahead and do this just a little cut can you see okay so i'll be able to tuck it in so i'm going to tuck it so this is what the <clears throat> neckline looks like so like i uh, stated i have sewn to the where we have the notch and i've sewn from here to where we have the notch so this is the neckline right now so you can see how open it is so i'll just take it the way it is this way i'm picking one one of it and i'm going to do what hem it this way can you see so this is the continuation of the sleeve by the time i iron it so i'll just go ahead and do what and so from that notch so i'm going to sew that very very neatly now backstitch so what i'm doing here is just trying to hem it you can also use your hemming gum if you don't want to have stitches there you can just go to your ironing table and use your hemming gum and iron it after weaving it <clears throat> so I'm sewing so once I get to the notch I'll also do what I'll back stitch so that's how to sew that so this is what I have on the neckline just straight that way I will turn over to the other part now and I'm going to also hem and stitch give it a good press all right so now I'm done ironing the neckline so you can see the part I hemmed can you see that and this is a continuation of the sleeve so the neckline is just this way okay so that's how to go about this kind of neckline. It doesn't have any, you know, natural neckline and all that. So the next thing we want to do is to, we want to talk about the sleeve now. We are going to have a turn-up sleeve for this dress. So the, for this dress, the turn-up sleeve now, I'm going to take <clears throat> the measurement from end to end. Here I have 16. So I'm going to cut my fabric on 17, okay? So I've already cut out the fabric. So there are two for the turn up. So the width is 4 inches. The width is 4 inches and the length is 17 inches. So I just pick up one of them now. This is how to go about the turn up. It's actually easy. I'll place it together this way so once i've placed it together i'll bring in my sleeve so this is the part of the sleeve where i want to attach the turn up so i'm going to sew it this way <clears throat> do you see how i'm going to sew it i'll sew it this way so at the end of the day it turns up and you have the seam in between so the two of them i'll bring it together i'm going to match it wrong side to the right side so i'll sew from end to end then i'll give it a good press so i'm done closing the sides but i left this part open that is where we are going to have the zip sewn so like i said i left it open to the apex so i'll even come down more i'll open it a little bit more so we'll go over to the machine now to sew the zip i'm using an invisible zipper so I'll advise you use an invisible zipper. So I'll change my presser foot now and I'll show you how to sew this zip. Here I'm sewing an invisible zip and this is what it looks like. So this invisible zip now, I'll just go ahead and open it up. So this part right now is supposed to be on the space, on this space. Can you see? So this is how it should be. So I'll just turn it this way. Can you see? So the normal way you sew your zip, there's nothing actually special. So I'm turning this um, part of the zipper now. 
for this side zip i need it to go in a little okay so i'll just push it in a little like this can you see so before i stitch so i'll just make sure it aligns on the same line so dropping my presser foot i'll go ahead and position it keep opening as i stitch my invisible zip so i think using an invisible zip i love to use it for dresses that have side zips okay so you don't even know sometimes you will not know whether uh, there is zip or there is no zip so sewing your invisible zip i'm sewing on the 0 0.5 inch line and as i'm sewing you can see me opening the zip okay so as you are sewing make sure you sew exactly at half an inch so this is what i do can you see i'm opening the zipper opening the part where my zipper foot will have to pass can you see that I see. So I'm now opening it, going into the other part of the seam line. So I'll keep opening. I'm just taking my time to show you how to sew the full dress. Okay, it's actually a simple dress and cute dress, as you can see right there on the thumbnail. So here I'll back stitch. So you can see how I did that. So on the other part of the zipper. I'll first zip it up on the under part or other parts. So this part now I'm going to zip up so I'll be able to also align the other. Can you see? So this is what it looks like now. So I'm going to turn it to this other part to sew. So as I zipped up a little, just a little, I'll spread out the side seam. Can you see the side seam? Then I'll also drop it back to from the part. You can see the my thread showing at that point. So once I'm done dropping, I'll begin to sew now. So again, coming up once again. So this is actually the same pattern you use in sewing your normal zip so the only difference here is that you keep opening your zipper as i'm opening it right now you can see the zipper uh, teeth area i'm opening it making sure i'm sewing my zip at exactly half an inch can you see how i'm opening and sewing my zipper so here I'll go back and open the seam you can see how I'm opening the seam so I'll go back and there I'll back stitch and we are done so I'll just go ahead and give my zip a good press okay so let me turn it to show you what it looks like so this is what the invisible zipper looks like can you see so you can see nobody sees what happened so by the time i give it a good press it closes up at that point okay so that is the beginning of it right here all right so 